Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. I'm glad you're back with us uh, live on this Sunday morning. I invite Diana to start with our prelude this morning. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Sam. Welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church. I'm glad you're back in worship. Uh, I appreciated the vacation time. I absolutely needed it, and it was good. I got some projects done around the manse. I got to meet those two uh, beautiful babies up in Wisconsin, my, my nephews, and they're, they're beautiful and wonderful and all that stuff. I just, I regret that I can't hold them right now silly virus. I wish it would go away so I could, could properly greet them. But uh, I appreciate the time off and thank you. Uh, a special thank you to Michelle and Tad for uh, uploading all the videos on all of our uh, various sites uh, the two weeks I was gone. Thank you. Uh, I also want to thank the skillful baking or the, the, the wonderful baking skills of uh, Crystal and Michelle and Kathy. Or I guess really it's frying, not baking. Uh, whatever. Uh, after worship, uh, they have prepared these wonderful apple fritters. Uh, I assume they're just in the bags ready to go. You just pick one up and take it home, right? Uh, all right. Uh, and they should be there in the fellowship hall. We're not having fellowship time here, so don't sit down and eat here, all right? But this is a, 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 an idea that they brought up that they just wanted to uh, a, a little taste of the Spoon River Drive uh, this year, and things are different. So we thank you. Uh, oh, yeah. 
but please just pick them up and take them home. If we have extras, I don't know what's going to happen. I guess Crystal and Michelle and Kathy are just going to eat them all. No. Yeah, we can deliver them. So if you're on Facebook and you're really craving it, and we have some extras afterwards, go ahead and type in the comments, and we'll we'll make sure you can get a bag. All right. Um, but yes, thank you. I also want to thank everybody who's continued to donate uh, food to the food pantry. Uh, we are pushing 600 pounds. We're really close to 600 pounds for the year uh, donated from this congregation that you are wonderfully generous. Um, when I dropped it off, the, the food with the Newcombs last week, uh, they said that, you know, they really appreciate all the food that we're giving, that it helps because they, they, it decreases how much money they have to spend. Uh, uh, so it, it really helps out at the food pantry when we can bring them a grocery cart full of groceries every month. Actually, twice a month, last month. Uh, I dropped two full grocery carts uh, last month. So thank you, everybody. And I know Thanksgiving is coming up next month, and that's usually a higher demand. Uh, they try to give everybody a turkey and some of the extra stuffing and stuff like that. So if you're out and about uh, this month, getting ready for Thanksgiving, thinking about it, maybe pick up a couple boxes of stuffing or some instant mashed potatoes or whatever. Uh, pick them up and uh, bring them in for the grocery cart this month, all right? Um, we've been down, I announced before uh, we, I left for vacation, Sunday school was canceled for the rest of 2020. Uh, session did not make this decision lightly, but we think it's in the best interest of the safety of the uh, kids and the, the teachers and we'll reconsider this in January as we know more uh, uh, and see how things are going in January. Uh, we, we, we're kind of, in a way, almost taking it quarter by quarter, but we're, we're just kind of seeing how it progresses. So um, uh, we'll just keep, keep you informed as we know more. Um, and thank you to everybody who is sending in their tithes and offerings, especially uh, while we were closed for those two weeks. Uh, we really need your support. Uh, thank you. Uh, it, it has helped to pay our bills and salaries during the shutdown. Uh, so feel free to bring them in and leave them in one of the offering plates or continue to send them in to Tim and Mickey Alm. Uh, and uh, I can get you their address if you, if you need it. If you have a prayer request and you're joining us on Facebook, um, go ahead and start typing now uh, in the comment section. And we'll make sure to be able to read that uh, during the joys and concerns time. So go ahead, why don't you go ahead and start typing now uh, so that we make sure we're able to read it by the time we get there uh, to the time of service. Uh, I think that's all the announcements I had. I already had a list of prayer concerns. Uh, are there any other announcements that I missed? All right, well, thank you. Um, seeing none, let it, oh, and today is World Communion Sunday. I think I should make a quick announcement. We are not officially having communion today, but those who are here and watching online, you might notice that I have the bread and the cup out. I'm going to uh, just show and go, kind of go through uh, communion a, 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 in a way that uh, connects us with everybody who's celebrating communion today, but we're not going through so. We're not going to have everybody come down and take bread and dip it in the cup. We're not going to do that. I just want that to be clear, all right? This isn't an official celebration of communion, but it's a way that we can still join together uh, with those who are celebrating around the world today on World Communion Sunday. All right? All right. Well, one of the things that I've been trying to think of, of ways that we can... Um, I should put on my mask since I'm leaving the pulpit, uh, is uh, lighting a candle, a candle of hope in the midst of all of this, that, that we are, uh, everything is different right now, everything is stressful, everything is anxious right now, but we worship the God of hope. Amen? Christ came as a light for the world, and so we light this candle in celebration of the hope that Christ promises us. I'm going to move that out of the air vent. In celebration of the, the, the light that Christ brings and the hope 
that we have that we are not alone in the midst of all this. Give thanks to the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we greet you once again in this sacred space. We have come because we need to be reminded of your love and your expectations for our living. We are like the vine you planted, watered, and protected. We know in our hearts that we need, want, and desire your presence in our lives. So we come in prayer and listen for your word to speak to our hearts and reveal again your desires for us. Amen. We take time each week to ask for forgiveness. Jesus lays out a plan for forgiveness. Yet we so often complicate things. Truth-telling and reconciliation are at the center of forgiveness. In this time of prayer, may we name and confess our sins together, beginning our journey towards restoration and wholeness. Let us pray. Loving God, present and near, you are beyond our words and our understanding. Help us to remember that you are at once infinite, boundless, timeless, and eternal, but at the same time intimately entwined in our lives. You are with us no matter where we find ourselves. When we have forgotten you, Lord, have mercy. When we have failed to speak words of love, Lord, have mercy. When we have neglected the needs of others, Lord, have mercy. Loving God, help us to recognize your presence and nearness with us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, hear us now in these moments of silent prayer and confession. Amen. Amen. Beloved, God does not abandon us to the systems that destroy. God does not bind us to our regrets for, or forever hold us to what we once believed. God says, come and follow. No forgiveness and sin no more. Love abounds and justice shall be manifest. Wherever new life is desired, may this peace of Christ be welcomed among us. Thanks be to God who leads us on paths of resurrection. Amen. I moved the, uh, the the hymn today to between the uh, or the, the song between the uh, sermon and communion or uh, the remembrance of communion this morning. So that's why we haven't had music yet this morning. So let us turn our attention now to the gospel lesson uh, for this morning, which is Luke 22 verses 7 through 22. Listen for the word of our Lord. The day of unleavened bread arrived when the Passover had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John with his task, Go and prepare for us to eat the Passover meal. They said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? And Jesus replied, When you go into the city, a man carrying a water jar will meet you. Follow him to the house he enters. Say to the owner of the house, The teacher said to you, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will show you into a large upstairs room already furnished. Make preparations there. They went and found everything just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the time came, Jesus took his place at the table, and the apostles joined him. He said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I tell you, I won't eat it, 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 eat it until it is fulfilled in God's kingdom. And after taking a cup and giving thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. I tell you from now on, as I won't drink from the fruit of the vine until God's kingdom has come. After taking bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after the meal and said, This cup is the new covenant by my blood, which is poured out for you. But look, my betrayer is with you. His hand is on this table. The human one goes just as it has been determined. 
but how terrible it is for the person who betrays him. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, during the announcements, today is World Communion Sunday. World Communion Sun Sunday actually started in the Presbyterian Church. Did you know that? Uh, at Shadyside Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh back in 1933. By 1940, the Federal Council of Churches in the United States was encouraging all of its member churches to celebrate communion together on World Communion, from S world communion Sunday. And from there, it spread around the world. As I was researching this morning about World Communion Sunday, Reverend Donald Kerr on the church's website, Presbyterian Church's website, he, his father was the one who started World Communion Sunday. He wrote that it was during the Second World War that the Spirit caught hold because we were trying to hold the world together. Worldwide communion symbolized the efforts to hold things together in a spiritual sense. It emphasized that we are one in the spirit and the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love that. I find that meaningful and poetic. That it took something like World War II to bring us all together around the communion table, around the world. And so we continue today to gather around the communion table on the first Sunday in October. Even though we might be celebrating things differently this year. Turning our attention to scripture passage this morning, I read from Luke a minute ago. This is a story that we've all heard about how uh, Jesus instituted the, the Last Supper. The disciples and Jesus were gathered together to celebrate the holy meal, the holiday meal. They met in the upper room in Jerusalem where they ate and drank together. It was during this sacred moment that Jesus commanded his disciples to do this and remember it to me. Ever since then, Christians have been gathered together around the table, praying and eating and drinking and singing and worshiping together, remembering Jesus' act of service and compassion and love. Ever since then, whenever we gather around this table here, praying and eating, we remember Jesus' act of service and compassion. We give thanks for Jesus' example and ministry. Over time, we have developed our own cultural and theological distinctions concerning Holy Communion. We do not all celebrate communion the same way, and that's okay. We all have our own traditions, our own cultures that we bring to this table. We bring different types of elements. We may even say different types of words. We might even believe different things about what is happening, whether it's the, really the body and blood of Christ or symbolically the body and blood of Christ or just an act of remembrance. We might believe and do and say different things around this table, but the truth is we are still gathered together around this table. The fact remains that we are all saints together around one table. We are joined together with all the saints around this table. We are joined in World Communion Sunday this morning because we realize that what really matters is not those things that divide us. What really matters is the one thing that unites us all. Love. That reminds me of the fact that it was on this night at the same table that Jesus gave the commandment to his disciples to love one another. That's where we get the term Monday Thursday. It comes from Latin meaning commandment. Monday meaning mandatum. It was the same night that Jesus taught us to love one another, to serve one another, to care for one another. The word for love that Jesus uses, I don't know if you know this, but in Greek there are multiple different words for love. 
And the, the, and the word that Jesus uses for love here is agape. Some of you may have heard that term before. It's become popular these days. Agape is the active type of love. To love meaning to, to get up and act and serve. That active act of servitude, of love and caring for one another. Jesus demonstrated this agape love by washing the feet of his disciples. That is what he's talking about here when he says to love one another, to serve one another. At this table, we Christians gather together all over the world, and we gather together in love. When you serve someone out of a sense of love for them, you are showing them agape love. When we gather together at this table, we are sent forth to share the peace and love of Christ. When we're gathered together and when we're sent from this table, we are united together in the same agape love that Jesus showed his disciples. I think it's so important for us to remember this type of love, this act of love in our lives. While we may have theological distinctions and cultural differences, we are, we are, we are united around one table with one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. I know that things are difficult right now. I know that we are divided in our country and our world in ways that we I've never seen before. People are at the, each other's throats. This pandemic has made us all stressed and anxious and worried. It can be overwhelming at times, which is why I think it is precisely why World Communion Sunday is so important now. Now more than ever. It took World War II to make World Communion Sunday a thing around the world. When the world gathered together for the first time together around the table, I think this pandemic is reminding us that, that we are gathered together around this table, even in the darkest moments, when everything seems to be coming apart. At Christ's table, there is always room for one more person, you. We might not agree about the best way to deal with the, with the pandemic. We not, might not agree about which politician to vote for. We might not even agree on all theological things. But we cannot deny the fact that Christ welcomes all of us to this table. When we are at this table, our, our differences melt away. We are, re, are, are united in love. And one day we will be seated together at the welcome table in Christ, uh, uh, the welcome table of Christ in heaven. In a second, I'm going to have Brady play a music video for the day. It's, it's an old gospel song called The Welcome Table. I don't know if you all have heard that song before. It's one of my favorite songs. We used to sing it at seminary almost every week. It reminds us that one day we're going to sit together at the welcome table, welcomed and served and loved by Christ. But until that day, we'll call to gather together around this table, and to get up from this table and go and serve and love as Christ served and loved us. So we remember with joy on that night what Jesus showed us, which was joy and love and grace and welcome. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to, to uh, Brady to pull up this uh, video here uh, called The Welcome Table Song.
Thank you. Wanda, I don't know why you can't hear us on Facebook. I'm sorry. We'll get it figured out this week, all right? I got a message that Wanda couldn't hear us on Facebook, but other people are. So I just wanted to address that, Wanda. Um, I see um, uh, that uh, Beth Martin commented on uh, that her dad's surgery is scheduled for Tuesday, um, and mom continues to heal well. Uh, so that is her prayer request this morning. Other than that, um, I have here a list that Wilma Briggs uh, had surgery Friday, uh, so continue prayers for her. Uh, Jim Ohm, uh, I heard this morning, um, is uh, still uh, in the ICU, but is uh, they're, they're, they're starting to wean him, and they're almost weaning him off the, uh, um, uh, he was on a ventilator. Jim Ohm had an infection, or not an infection, a, a reaction to a medication that uh, uh, affected his lungs. And he was put on a ventilator this last week. Um, he continues to uh, recover and uh, get stronger, but it's a long process. It's not going to be something that just they flip a switch and he's back to normal. Um, it's going to be a long time. Continue prayers for Jim Ohm. Uh, uh, um, but the good news is they're starting to the, the process of weaning him off the ventilator, which is good news. Uh, he continues to heal. So we'll keep all the Ohms and especially Jim in our prayer this morning. Uh, Jerry Brown had a stroke, so we'll continue to pray for him uh, and those who care for him. Um, sorry, I keep breathing right into the mic. I'm sorry? Jim, Jerry Brown. Did I say Jim? I said Jerry. Okay. Jerry Brown. Uh, uh, um, uh, Jerry Brown. So uh, uh, just prayers for him. Um, and then uh, just because I mentioned it in the videos a few times uh, while I was away, my mom's surgery went great. She's home. Uh, she had gallbladder removed. Uh, she's up and back to normal. She, uh, Friday she actually came and we walked around uh, the park in Canton for a little bit and said she's back about 95% uh, to where she was before. Uh, so that's good news. She just doesn't react well to anesthesia, so it took her a little bit longer to get, get back up on her feet, but she's doing good. Uh, did I miss any other joys or concerns this morning that may have popped into your mind while we've been worshiping? Any else on Facebook, Liz? I don't think I see any. I think uh, I think Beth was the only one. Um, all right, then let us uh, center our hearts and minds in prayer this morning. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we come to you today thankful for, for the sun that's shining, uh, for the cool weather that uh, feels nice, we thank you that the leaves are turning beautiful colors, which all remind us that your creation is good. Help us to care for your creation as your stewards. Lord, we have many prayer requests to lift up this morning. Continue prayers for, for Beth Martin's parents as they continue to struggle with their health issues and preparing for surgery and recovering from surgery. And, and falls and all of that and I pray for Beth as well that you'll give her a sense of peace in all of this Lord I pray for Jim Ohm that uh, uh, as they pr uh, begin and continue the process of weaning him off the, the ventilator which is good news that you will continue to help him in his recovery we know that this will be a slow process that this will be weeks and probably even months before he's back to normal. So help him in this time and all those who care for him. Lord, we lift up Jerry Brown who had a stroke. Lord, we know that um, you are the God of healing. And so we pray that you would be with him and all those who are sick in this time. Help us to be your people. Help us to, to uh, continue to uh, 
gather together in love and to serve one another. And Lord, I give you thanks for my mom that her surgery went well. Lord, we lift up all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As I said at the beginning, we are not going to be celebrating communion in a traditional sense today. But I still wanted to join with people around this table and remind you, this is just a reminder today of what happened on that night all those years ago. It was on that night that Jesus gathered with his disciples. He took the bread on the table and he broke it. He passed it amongst his friends, his beloved friends and, and disciples and said, Take, eat this, all of you, in memory of me. This is my body, which is given for you. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup and he filled it with wine and said, This is the cup of the covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this, all of you, in memory of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's death and resurrection until he comes again in glory. Thanks be to God. Remember, remember, remember. And then get up and let us gather around this table, let us eat together, let us celebrate together, and then let us get up and serve one another in love, and that agape love that Jesus taught us to uh, live. We give you thanks and praise this day, O Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you today, as, as you go home, that you, you take that uh, apple fritters, and, and it may not be the bread we're used to, we may not have the, the cup, grape juice, but, but have a communion-like moment today with your loved ones, okay? Sit together, tell stories, that's what Jesus did that night, right? They told stories, they laughed, they probably cried, they were nervous, they were anxious, they were happy, they were sad, it sounds like a typical day in COVID, right? We're happy, we're sad, we're crying. We're angry. <laughs> We're all of those things in one day, right? I can't be the only one. So uh, continue to remember and to love and serve one another. Amen. And amen. And as we depart this place today, may the God we serve pour grace and blessing into our lives. May the face of God shine light upon us. May we celebrate God's love and justice in such a way that everyone will come to know God and will experience God's grace and blessings for themselves. And go this day with the love of God and the peace of Christ Jesus and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to serve the Lord. Amen. Go in peace.
Amen. Thank you for coming.